Hi everyone, welcome to part 6 of the Retrobat build. This one I guess is slightly different in the fact that um, there's no games link as such in the in the description um, but this is how to add Windows games. So I had a, had a couple of comments um, in, in the previous videos about how to add Windows games and people yeah, had Windows games but weren't sure how to add them into Retrobat. So this is hopefully we, uh, as I always say, a quick one just on how to add Windows games um, because there's a couple ways of doing it. And it is quite straightforward. Um, so uh, for this one, it's actually a game that someone was asking about. Uh, this one called uh, Anno 1701 AD. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so um, yeah, so basically what you do is is you install it as normal. So obviously with all other systems, you um, put everything in the ROMs folder. It's all self-contained, so you can move Retrobat around. Windows games, I guess, are slightly different. We could we could install it into here. And I'll show that in a second, um, but obviously there may be some system software that it needs to install in, into Windows elsewhere. You know, there might be other sort of other utilities that go with it. There might be things like DirectX and uh, you know Visual C++ distributables it needs to run all that kind of stuff. So you might be able to have the game itself within the Retrobat folder, but you might have some other dependencies that need to be installed on the other machine if you're moving between machines, especially. So I guess Windows, yeah, Windows machines are slightly different than plain standard retro ROMs and games. But anyway, so what you do is, so I've got that game as my example, which I've installed. So I installed that, again, on my X drive. See, now I've got, I use Launchbox on Windows. Less, less of playing games, more for, for organizing my games. I find it quite easy to organize through there. Um, so under the games folder, a whole bunch of systems in here. Uh, and then towards the bottom, I've got Windows. Again, a whole bunch of Windows games in here, but so this is the uh, I've got the game from from GOG. Here's the installer. Just ran through and uh, and ran the install. Here's the folder I've, I've installed it to. So this is where all the game files sit, which is the destination. Uh, and then what it's actually done is on my desktop created two shortcuts for me. Now the first way to get a game into Retrobat or Windows game, and probably the easiest is if you go to your Retrobat folder. So we're under Builds Retrobat. Uh, and then, so under the ROMs folder, if you scroll to the end, towards the end, there should be a Windows folder. Now, the first way of doing it is simply picking up, pick up those shortcuts, take a copy, and paste them in here. So Retrobat will actually pick up the shortcut and actually launch the shortcut and add that to the menu. And so the game stays where it is. Um, you don't need to worry about where you've installed it. You can install it wherever you want. Just put the shortcut into the into the ROMs and then Windows folder, and then it should work. So let's quickly give this a try. I, you may have noticed I'm running everything full screen um, this time because you know the game will probably run full screen. Um, I mean, having said that, in the test I just did, um, for me it ran full screen, but the actual capture software showed it in the top left-hand corner. So that's probably what you'll see. But obviously, on my screen, in in reality. It's running full screen. It just doesn't capture properly. So it's a little bit weird. Anyway, ignore that. Let's launch Retrobat and see what happens. Again, I'm running this full screen. So hopefully, somewhere down here, we should have. There you go, Windows games. So let's pick something up. So let's have a look in here. Yeah, so you see it's found both. So there's the. Uh, I think that's a normal version, and then the Sunken Dragon, I think, is like an expansion or a similar game. Uh, sorry, a set in other games included with with, with the uh, with the download. But anyway, so it's basically it's picked those up, it's found them. Also, you notice there's no artwork. And that's because we just added a game manually. There's you know we need to scrape the artwork, which we can come on to. Um, so let's quickly try it. Let's just launch it from here. Ah, oh. <laughs> so can't launch DirectX. This may be because I'm recording. When I tried, luckily, when I tried it a minute ago, it ran. So, this if I can OK that. So, I guess you have to word for it. It does work. So, you can see it's added. Um, so, basically, you add the shortcut into that ROMs Windows folder. And that's pretty much the way you go. Um, the other option, which we'll try uh, with a different game, a different way of doing it. 
um, is so I've got okay some games back in that launch box folder so my launch box games and down to windows so I guess something like Street Fighter 4 I know they're quite big aren't they I'm no tournament. You know how it's something suitable I can just drop in. Right. Come on. Well, I think this is like a a, a remake of Ghosts and Goblins or a or a newer version. That's quite small, so we'll pick that. So yeah, so what, what I saw you basically pick up the whole folder. Go back to your retro back fol uh, folder into ROMs and into that Windows folder where it's gone there you go and then paste the whole folder in then you rename and do dot PC on the end so it knows it's a PC game and what it should do it should look at that folder and automatically pick up the the XD the, XD, you know, the actual application inside it so let's give that a try see what happens now Yeah, I've got to run full screen. There you go, Ghosts and Demons. Let's just see. I hold down the button. Hold down A on this, then go to Edit. You can see at the top here is identity. Let's pick up the folder. Not quite sure where it, it knows what exit to run, but. So, no. Let's uh, give it a whirl, see what happens. There you go, it's running. <laughs> it's just running in a small window. Uh, presumably, and well, hopefully, you can see it as I've seen it captured. I'm not even sure about actually played this game. Well, it's loading, I think, just a bit slow. So I guess yeah, I guess, I guess that's the two ways that they've got in their their FAQs on the uh, on on their uh, website. So I guess basically you can um, if you've got games installed already on the Windows machine, just drag the shortcuts in. Um, if you've got some other games that are that you want to kind of keep everything in one place and you want to keep everything inside that RetroBat folder, then yeah, pick up the whole folder, move it in, and just rename it to put a .pc on the end. So. Oh, here we go. So we're up and running. So this looks like a kind of a fan remake. I can't even remember. And I'm sure there'll probably be a setting somewhere to run full screen. Of course, this runs running in a little window. Let's see if I can actually get out of this. Find out what the keys are. Come on, what's my mouse now as well? It's there somewhere. Oh, if in doubt. Windows keys. Yep. There we go, let's end. Come on. End and not expand. Anyway, I'm sure there's some keys to exit. <laughs> I just need to find out what they were. So yeah, yeah that, that's running. Another thing I was going to say is just um, obviously scraping the artwork. So I guess this, this video is two in one. It's how to add Windows games, but then also how to, to scrape artwork. So we're obviously going to scrape for the Windows games, but it's exactly the same if, if you want if you want to, obviously if you're following the guide, but then want to add some other systems that you've got already, you can sort of do it yourself. Obviously you can do that, but you probably need to um, get the artwork. So. Just for a second, let's come out of here. And then what I'm going to do, also put it in full screen. What I'm going to, going to change that slightly. Well, I'm going to change that back to window mode. 
just it's easier to see it running a window. So like I said, I think right in the first video, you've got this batgui.exe and root to the retrobat folder, which is basically lets you tweak some settings. So we do the ini file and also basically I tick this. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna run it back into um what I had before. So I had 1980 1920 sorry so let's do 1820 just to make it so it's not quite full size screen so it's easy to see I think by 950 I had I think it was a bit too small so let's do that save the config yep and then we can close and close launch it again yeah it comes up the window again so yeah the scraping artwork so we hit the menu key and we've got the scraper here um, you've got a couple of um, different scrapers built in um, and these arcade ones uh, this well so arcade will only do sort of arcade games and I think the other two are similar they're limited to what systems they can do but by far the best one that I've found is screen scraper by far the most popular so if you go to settings then you've got things like what what image source you want to display um, within, within the system. So, so the main image source, we're going to have a title screenshot, so the title of the game, uh, and then the box, you can have a 2D box or a 3D box. So when you, um, I tend to go, I mean, 3D box probably look better, but I think with 2D boxes, I, kind of, I guess there's more of them. You'll probably get more matches because you know, not every, most, most games will have a 2D box image available. Not all of them have 3D. So I tend to stick to 2D and the logo source is um, basically you, you, the wheel you got here for the systems when you got the same thing for the games at the northern right hand side um, the wheel is basically a transparent image or tra sorry, a transparent logo for the game whereas the marquee tends to be a rectangular box with artwork for the game in so I like to go for the wheel version but so you can change whatever you want um, and then when it's scraping, it can download all the extra information. So if you remember the, the game list XML that we, we found, um, or we looked at you know, previously, um, it can add things like rating in and um, other bits and pieces into there. And also we can want to download the video. We can do fan art, kind of background fan art, if you really want to, and turn that on. Um, additional bezels, you know, a map, the backside of the box, don't really need that. Um, a few other bits and pieces here, like you know, the manual for the, for the game. Uh, pad to keys is, <clears throat> I think, more if you've got um, systems that are kind of more keyboard driven. And there's some pad to keys, basically, a, a utility which allows you to map buttons on your controller, or multi buttons on your controller, to a keyboard button or multiple keyboard buttons. Um, so, like I say, that, that's mainly for systems that, that, that run keyboards. And some sometimes they have, you know, predefined or customized pad to key config files that you know it's supplied with the game to make it easier to, to use so I mean I've never had to use them I don't think <laughs> so that's up to you uh, the main thing is username and password so what you want to do is create a free account oh, it's completely free just come over to this so just do screen scraper fr it's a, it's a French site so yeah screen scraper fr don't worry it's in it's, it's in multiple languages, so you're good. So when you come here, you just basically just create um, create a login. I've got one already. And then when you, and obviously that's free. So if you create a free account, you get something like 20,000 um, um, connections per 24 hours. So, I mean, that should be the, you know, fine for, but for most people, um, if you then want to go up or you just want to contribute and just like pay thanks to the guys, You've got this bit here where you can you can contribute you know, as low as like a dollar or one euro per month, and if you do that, your it goes up to fifty thousand requests per day, um, which you know which you might need. If you do two euros or two dollars, you get fifty thousand. Um, but then I think something else changed. I think you just yeah you just basically get a different award. So when you when you log on, if you're in the forum or whatever, you get a different little logo next to you. I think that's the only difference. You become a, uh, a silver financial contributor rather than a bronze. But everyone can see how good you are. Uh, and then as you go up into the higher ones, 
so five you get an extra thread so you get a hundred thousand scrapes per day then an extra thread which basically these ones you got single thread so it has to scrape one thing at a time when you come to this level you can scrape two things at a time so it basically doubles the speed and then obviously it goes up if you do 10 euros you get five threads so obviously you can then scrape your collection if it's that big and you need you need to go up to that you can scrape your collection five times quicker than you can the free account but i've always found the free account fine so yeah like i say it's got <clears throat> these are all different systems it's got pretty much everything on here and i've you know you get really good good hit rate so yeah just create a free account on here and then once you've got your free account come back in here and type it in as you can see mine was this Oh, wrong key. I keep it in enter rather than the actual rather than X. Let's go back into scraper. So it's kept my username password. We will need to uh, blank out. Keep it in that enter key. So it's got scraper. So scraper saying make sure it's kept it. Yep. Yeah, so you don't pass it in. That's good. We're using the screen scraper, okay. So um, you tell it what game to scrape for. <clears throat> you can do just everything, and it'll basically <clears throat> rescrape your whole collection. Or you can do only games that are missing data, or only games that are missing all data. So I think that's generally a good one. And so if a game's got, say, you know, the box artwork and a logo, but it's missing some fan art or something else, it will rescrape it. Or this one is if, it <clears throat> if it's missing every single bit. And then this one is to scrape everything regardless. Um, so let's leave it on that one. Um, and you'll, you can also say if I've scraped it in the last X number of days, don't bother doing it again. But obviously for this we'll say no, don't, don't ignore anything, just you know, rescan everything you can. And then you can tell it what to scan. Uh, these are all the systems we've got so far. But I'm going to say select none and then just go and pick Windows. And then when you're ready, just hit the back key. And then say scrape now. In theory, <clears throat> it should go off and start scraping now. You can see, yeah, see in the top right there, just scraping one of three. So it's only, only three, no, three games, so it should be fairly quick. Obviously, you can imagine if you're doing a <clears throat> like a whole arcade set, it's going to take a while. You might want to leave it, maybe even overnight. Um, so that's finished. That says at the top here, update game lists to apply. So I've got the game settings, my voice is going, uh, click on update game list, are you sure? Yep. So now if we go back into Windows, has it matched any? No, it hasn't. It may be that, obviously this one, like I say, was a bit of a, I guess a shareware or a, um, you know, a fan-made game. But yeah, surprised not to scrape these. So what you can do, um, obviously, you can go and get the artwork, artwork manually and put it in the right folders, like you've seen from the other pack that I've got, um, you know, that are available in the videos. Or you can hold down the select button here and say scrape the individual game. <clears throat> and then you get a kind of an interactive interactive scrape. So if it matches something or partially matches, you can say you know, confirm or, or not whether that's a, a match. Which you do occasionally have to do on some games. So it's searching, it doesn't look like it's trying to, it's going to find anything, which is a shame. Because sometimes, you know, especially with this, the name's a little bit odd, it may not. It may not pick it up, so do input. Let's do just that then, to see if that makes any difference. Now it's, it does. It's found some matches now, so it's found. There you go. See, it's found it on there. Actually, I'm not quite sure what the history and, and those are. But anyway, that one looks like a pretty good match to me. So let's uh, let's pick that one. 
I mean, obviously the image isn't the best quality there, but it's uh, better than nothing. Like I say, you can go through and um, manually change these. So let's scrape this one. Like I say, I think this sunken drag one's either a an add-on or a expansion pack or something possibly. So I guess yeah, it makes it less common. So yeah, not really much I can change that unless we just do the name of the game and see what see what it comes up with. Maybe nothing. <laughs> oh well, let's um, let's just cancel that rather than saying watching watching that spin round and round. Let's just try Ghosts and Demons and see see if that picks anything up. I probably not pick the best there. Best examples of the games, you know, I've added other ones, things like you know the Street Fighter games, etc. And they come in automatically, so let's try the input a bit again. I mean maybe that doesn't like it. Something like that. And then, nope. <laughs> okay, let's not sit there muck about it too long. Like I said, that did pull some stuff in. So yeah, but that's how to add the Windows game. So what I'll quickly do is just, um, just I guess to complete off the uh, the artwork piece. So like I say, if you did want to then um, do some of the artwork manually, what we can do, let's, see, let's, let's snap that there. Grab that window. Um, so let's do this one. So it was. Right, let's find ROMs and uh, Windows. And it was Ghosts and Demons, isn't it? Let's do a quick search on that. And look at images. I see it's Ghost Demon's a version for uh Yeah, that fandom. So if you did find that work like this, for example. What's this one? So let's say just as a quick example, we'll, we'll grab that and we'll stick that in that location. So in here, sorry, in here we've got images and if we just save that like that. So you see, so anything that's the, the, the box artwork has got dash, so it's got the name of the game and then dash thumb on the end. So this one we want to call, if we can, no that's because I copied the path into the clipboard, we want to take the name of the game, let's cancel that, we want to call that, it seems a bit antiquated, a bit, bit long winded, but you basically get the image, download it, rename it, the name of the game, then put a hyphen one on the end. I need to open this um, paint and just save it a JPEG or, or a PNG. It's in the right format. Um, let's just re resize it as well. 
So it looks a bit better. Four hundred, maybe. Nope, not that. What was I think? Maybe I won't resize it. I mean, just, just leave it as it is. There was a certain size I, I should set all the 2D box art to. So, you know, a JPEG or a, or a PNG is fine. So let's just save that in the right format. And then we can delete that one. So, after all that mucking about, in the under the images folder, we've got one that we scraped automatically there. Now we've got one for, for Ghosts and Demons. So, in theory, if we now go back. Back in here, back into Windows. It's not picked up. It may be that special character in the middle. <laughs> oh, I don't love it when things just happen or well, don't work. Uh, let's just try refreshing the games list. Don't think I won. Uh, nope. Not liking it. So what you can do again is hold down, uh, edit the metadata, and then you can say okay, image, and then you can actually browse for it. So okay, the image you want to use is in here. Page down, not up. So many folders, so many support systems. Uh, windows under images and there we go also this is the very manual way of doing it you'd hope stuff was auto scraped and there we go let's put it in so that's kind of <coughs> excuse me a very manual way of doing it um, like I say um, it's handy that obviously the, the other provide stuff right of the build comes with all the artworks you don't have to worry um, but that's basically how you how you should scrape artwork and obviously for our systems it, it's, it's working quite well I guess for Windows and for sort of random games like this maybe not so much so let's just come out here for now and we'll quit that and just see that image file whether it has renamed it or anything yeah no just we're pointing at it now so yeah, that's 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 where all the um, the artwork would go. So if you look at like one of the examples that we've already got on here, um, like, like Final Burn, we look under images. So they've got the name. So the, you know the background fan art like this uh, for 19xx. Okay, that's, here's also the name game dash fan art. Uh, image is actually like the screenshot. Logo is dash marquee. Um, and then the dash thumb is the 2D box, which is there. And then you go on to the next game, so you've got you know, fan art, the image, your logo, and your thumb. And you basically you name it like that. So you might, you, I was like, when, when you scrape, you know, you, you put, touch wood, you're never going to get 100% matches. Uh, there's always going to be the odd game that might be missing some artwork. So if you if you, you know you really want to get 100% correct artwork collection you can you can basically go and manually find it online or find it you know find a source somewhere and uh, and drop it into the right right location call it the right thing and it'll be it'll show up so hopefully that made sense it's a bit bit of a ramble and a bit of a you know voyage of discoveries we're going around but that's basically how to add the windows games like i say drag the shortcut in or put the whole folder in and call it to rename it to you know well, not rename it but put dot pc on the end and then you should be good to go um and then for the artwork i also recommend using screen scraper create a free account put your details into the the scraping option or menu within retrobat and uh, kind of away you go and if all else fails there are those manual manual options i just did there to you know go in and, and scrape an individual game and because sometimes you're scraping an individual game and it'll come up with multiple multiple results so it's basically you know it has an auto selected or it can't work out what the right game is and you have to go through and basically pick it and tell it you know it's that game there and then it'll download the right stuff for you or you know the, the very very manual way is to do it outside of retrobat and just grab the images and put them into into that images folder and then 
rename them so they're so they're named correctly. So yeah, hope that was useful. Like I say that was um, just added Windows games. Um, um, yeah. Um, so yeah, next one we'll be back to adding some uh, some normal sets in. I have to look through and, and then see what's available. So yeah, um, the idea is to keep going and going and going. And I mean, obviously you can see from from Retrobat the number of pre-created folders in here. It's what just over 150. So 151. It would be nice to work our way through and do do at least some games. You know, it might, it might not be like you know a full set or hundreds of games for each system, but some of the more obscure systems we might you know add five, ten games or whatever it might be. Um, just so we can say we've got some games from every single system. That'd be quite cool. Um, so that'd take a little while. So I think what I'd like a number four would Sega and Nintendo is kind of bulk bulk chunks them together um, and do it that way so yeah yeah stay tuned um, I hope you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you'll get a notification of when I release the next video hopefully in a couple of days although currently uh, is uh, is Easter in the UK um, and so that's a couple of days off work and spending some time with the kids so there might be a couple of extra days before the next video um, but yeah bear with and I'll be back as soon as possible thanks